So recently I switched from the i3 window manager to BSPWM and today I'm going to talk about how to actually configure it. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it will really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help will be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So. Basically with BSPWM, the way that it works is it's not like other window managers you've probably worked with. The way that you actually configure this is through a basically a script file. So there's this programming interface pretty much called BSPC, which is how you pretty much control everything that goes on with BSPWM. You can use it to like move nodes around and do all of that stuff, but you also use it just to run configurations. So I'll show you what that actually looks like on my configuration. So I'll zoom in on a bit, and I guess I can kill my compositor? Wrong key. That one. There we go. And let's see. So that'll be in my BSP folder. So CBS. So that's in your .config folder, in the BSPWM folder, in the BSPWMRC file. You probably won't have that when you first download the application, unless the version that you downloaded comes packaged with the default config. But if it doesn't exist, just make this directory in this file and then you can start actually configuring stuff. So you also need to make sure that it is executable. So if I just quit out of this now, I'll just go in here so you can actually see that. So as you can see in LF, an executable file is highlighted in green. You have to make sure it's executable and you have to make sure that your user can execute it. Otherwise you can't actually run the program. It'll just hitch when it's trying to actually load up the configs. So Basically, this is what it looks like. It doesn't have to be a shell script. You can do a bash script, you can do a Z shell script, you can even do a Python script or a Perl script if you really want to. All you need to be able to do is to be able to execute programs that you would execute in your shell. Obviously, the easiest way to do that is gonna be just to use something like your normal shell or something like that. But if you wanna use Python, go right ahead. Okay, so the first thing that I've got in here is BSPC rule dash R and then asterisk. This is basically just to clean up every time I actually reload my configs. So within BSPC, you can actually define rules for certain windows. I don't have any rules and I'm not really sure about the rule syntax. So I'm going to save that for a separate video. But if you do have any rules, this is a good command to actually include because basically it'll just clean up everything. So if I bring up the man page of BSPC, let's see if we can find it. So rule dash R, there we go. So if we put in rule and then dash R, that'll remove the given rules. And then obviously if you use an asterisk, that'll just match everything. Okay, so next up we have the application auto starts. So like with something like i3, if you want any applications to launch when your window manager launches, you can just put them in here and you have to make sure that they actually open up as a background application because once again, this is just a regular script. It doesn't do any special handling for you like i3 does. So if you don't open stuff up in the background and you have applications that you open that are blocking, like for example, transmission RSS, then it'll just hitch the window manager and you will just be stuck there and you have no idea what's going on. The other thing you have to make sure you're wary of is that unlike something like i3, because it doesn't do those special handling, if you have applications that you can have multiple instances of, make sure you kill them in your auto start. Because what will happen is that every time you restart your configs, so say you want to, I don't know, say you're playing around with your BSP configs and you need to restart. What it'll do is it'll run through all of this again. And if you have any application auto starts, it'll actually open up those once again. So for example, with transmission RSS, I had, I think, five gigs of RAM being used by just this application because I think I had like 20 instances of it open. So now what I do is I make sure that I kill everything. And that is not actually the syntax for that command. It should be kill all like that. I don't know why I did it like that. Uh, there we go. You don't put the, um, the dash in there. It's just kill all with one word. And then the name of the actual program. I don't know where this actually came from. Man, kill all, does it say? Kill, kill all, oh my god, I just did that twice in a row. Kill processes by name, maybe this was just something I got with my default packages, but your other option is obviously just to get the PIDs of stuff and then kill the programs like that, or just some way to kill all of the previous instances of anything that you're using. 
So obviously with some stuff it doesn't really matter like PyCom or Compton because you can only have one instance of that but I still make sure I kill it anyway. So the other stuff that might be a good idea to load in here is your X resources config and something else like maybe your wallpaper. So stuff like that that doesn't really make sense to have actually loaded until you have your graphical environment loaded up. Okay, so next up we have the monitor configs. So monitor configuration is a bit weird within BSP because it's just, I haven't really worked out how to make it work real seamlessly. It probably works perfectly fine on a system where you're not hot plugging, but if you have to hot plug, you will run into difficulties. So by that I mean having to unplug and plug in your actual external display. So pretty much what I have to do is I have to refresh my configs every time that I unplug my monitor. If you're on a desktop, you won't have this difficulty because once you first load up the system, everything will just be working and you won't have any difficulties whatsoever. To define monitors, basically you use the syntax BSPC monitor the name of the actual output and then dash D, I believe, let's find out what that does. I can't remember the exact thing that does. So dash D, ah, that will reset the desktops. So that'll let you add and remove desktops. So basically what I'm doing is resetting the desktops to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then for my external monitor that I've got my like OBS and stuff on, I have given it the desktops eight, nine, and zero. So zero is actually 10, not really zero. So next up we have the general configuration. So the first thing is the automatic scheme. So this is the way that the actual nodes are created. So I'll move my webcam so you can actually see it. So if we just create windows over here, you'll see they are created in this sort of backwards Fibonacci spiral sort of thing. The other version of this is just called spiral. So if we bring up the man page for that again, man BSPC, and then go back to automatic, automatic underscore scheme. Okay, so the other version of it is just called Spiral, which is actually the sort of Fibonacci spiral that you're probably used to if you've used any other window managers like DWM or something like that. So you also have things like Initial Polarity, which will define which side of the window a new window is created on. And Second Child, I believe, will just make it so it opens up on the right side or below. I think First Child, first child it opens it up on the top and the left or something along those lines. Obviously with this stuff, you probably best testing it out for yourself because that'll make it a lot easier. So the next thing we have is the pointer modifier. So this really only matters if you use floating windows. So if I create a floating window, then basically if I press shift and then click on the window, I can then drag it around. Or if I press shift and whatever action two was, I think that's right click. No, that's action three maybe, but you can then resize it. I can't remember what the other action button is. Someone should probably let me know. It's probably like scroll or something. Doesn't matter. I can resize it and I can move them around like that. I don't typically use floating windows much, but it is nice to have that option there. So you can define that as a bunch of different keys. I can't remember all of the keys. I think it's basically the main modifier keys, space and shift, if I'm remembering it correctly. So Let's see, pointer modifier, sorry, that's the one I was looking for. So you can do shift, control, lock, and the modifier keys. So whatever you feel most comfortable with, it doesn't really matter what you use. I like shift because it's just easy to hit with my pinky, but use whatever you want. So focus follows pointer is fairly obvious. So if you notice, I have a little blue border around my windows. Basically, that's what that does. So wherever my cursor goes is the window that I'm gonna be focused on. So the window that has a blue border is my focused window. History aware focus, I don't remember what that one does, but I chucked that in there for some reason. History aware. Maybe that's not actually a config and that's just something that I had in there from another config. No, I guess that one actually isn't a config that exists anymore. I stole that from DistroTube's config, but I guess that was removed at some point maybe? I'm not sure. Removed disabled monitors and removed unplugged monitors are for my hot plugging, so they do exactly what they say. So. If I've got monitors that are defined and I've got like desktops for those, then remove unplugged and remove disabled monitors will basically remove those and it should technically drop them down onto your main screen, but I've had it not work as neatly as I would like it to. So I'm not exactly sure how perfectly that works. 
Merge Overlapping Monitors is another one that I've got in there from DistroTubes configs, but I can't remember exactly what it does. I should probably test that out, but I've got two monitors that are the same resolution, so it's probably not going to do anything anyway. But yeah, that I should probably work that one out. So next up we have the like general padding and window gaps and things like that. So I've got a 32 pixel window gap. If you notice that it changed off screen, I changed it in a previous recording and then I just didn't bother to change it back. I've got this matching my top bar width of the poly bar so that when I refresh my configs, it doesn't like bump the windows down. It's not too important because your poly bar will create a bit of a gap there anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. But I just like to have it there because that is treated as a window. So basically what happens is that poly bar window at the top will then have that 10 pixel window gap that I've got defined down here. So you might notice that the other paddings I've got all set to zero. So the reason I've got it like that is because I don't really feel like wasting any extra pixels and it also makes defining my window gap significantly easier. So I've got my window gap set to 10. So between each of these windows, there is 10 pixels. And if I was to do like left padding or right padding, then that would mess up the padding on these sides here. And I don't really feel like dealing with that. I think it looks really nice like this and I'm gonna keep it like this. So next up, we also have the border width, which is basically the borders along here. So any more than two pixels, at least on a 1080p screen, I feel like is a bit too much and any less, and it gets really difficult to see the lines. So I kind of like it where it is. I might change it around, but for now, I do like it. There was one thing I did forget to mention before, and that is the click to focus up here. So you can actually define it so if you go over to another window, it doesn't change that window until you click on it or, or until you press a key. I like it to just follow my cursor. So however you feel like doing it, maybe you just don't use a mouse at all. So you want to just disable that and disable the focus follows pointer. But however you feel like doing that is honestly going to be up to you and how you feel most comfortable using your window manager. So this is by no means everything that you can configure. A lot of the stuff in here, I don't really feel like touching, like ignore EWMH focus. I don't know what that is, so I'm not even gonna touch it. Or you have things like monocle, which is sort of like full screen, but you have transparency. I think that's how it works. I can't remember the exact way that works, so I'm not entirely sure. You're gonna have to test that out for yourself. Or like you can, change the directional focus tightness, the tightness of the algorithm used to decide whether a window is on the der side of another window, except the following values high and low. I haven't tested that one, but you might want to test it out for your own system. And if you like it, then keep it on. If you don't, then do whatever you want with it. So I think that is pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button, leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think. If you want to see more configuration videos like this, let me know in the comment section. I'm more than happy to do them. So remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below if you want to see those. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist there's videos in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my Twitter and my Mastodon if you want to get video updates. I've also got my library link if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, and also my Discord if you want to chat with me. Also, my support links are down there, so if you want to support the channel, feel free to do that. Obviously, you don't have to, but if you do want to give some money to the channel, feel free to do that. But all the videos will remain available for free if you don't feel like doing that. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now, and I'm out.